<laughs> oh, it's just been one of those days. It's hot. Um, you know, here's the irony about life. Just yesterday, I filmed the last video where I said, oh geez, I haven't had the opportunity to crawl through the attic yet. Well, I had to go through here this morning and I bellied all the way over to here. And then I had to belly all the way out to here. I just thought it was funny. Uh, to get to the RG6 and the Cat5 wires, which I ran to this bay. I'm gonna put a box down here that's gonna house the TV cable, the RG6, and then I ran a Cat5 wire home run into the garage, just in case. I don't know what kind of data system he's gonna get. And then this is wonderful, but I'm gonna put the box for that on this side right here. So we have electricity on one side and then the data stuff on this side with, I think I mentioned that two inch flexible chase, conduit chase that I'm gonna to run to the box. Here's a milestone, got the first piece of rock in place. I love this panel lift. This is just, you know, my days of balancing sheetrock on my head to do ceilings. That ended about 2009 when I bought this thing and I really, really put this to good use. It paid for itself the first job. And you'll see the building's not square. That's a factory edge. And I was trying to split the difference of that tube for, but oh well, it's close enough. At least I got my can lights lined up. That's really all that matters. <laughs> all right, I'll come back in a minute. Well, T-square works better when you step on it and bend it. Dang it. This panel lift is money. I went through 10 sheets yesterday. It was a pretty decent day. Uh, I ended up buying this drywall at Home Depot, which I'm not a big fan of because stuff like that corner, I mean, they run into their sheetrock with their forklifts. I shouldn't be buying pre-damaged sheetrock, but Home Depot's right by here. It's close by. And, uh, you know, like that corner is all crushed right there. I mean, I can fix all that. I can fix all that, but I don't like buying the stuff pre-damaged. You know, if I'm going to have a smashed corner, I'd rather have it because I screwed up and dropped it or something. But whatever. Ten sheets went up yesterday. Relatively small amount left over. Um, which, this is all perfect. Today, I, I brought eight more sheets in today. I'm using uh, the Fast Set 5 lightweight mud for the seams, for the first coat of the seams, and then I'm going to go over with the lightweight Westpac uh, taping and topping JC. This is the screw gun that I use. It's a DW257 DeWalt screw gun. Best money you'll ever spend. Huge time saver. I know it's not the production guys use the one with the strips, the preloaded strips, but I don't do drywall every day. But if you've got 80 your bucks or so hanging around, that's the way to go. And those are my good knives. The one on the right, those are my good taping knives. That's the A-team right there. We'll get into a whole discussion of taping knives if you guys really want to hear that. But I won't bore you with it. So I'm going to set you down for a minute, <clears throat> clear my throat, stretch my back, and uh, get crack a lacking. And just like that, we are ready for an inspection. Inspection's coming tomorrow. The inspector's coming tomorrow morning. It's crazy, man. Let me turn this fan off and we'll go for a walk and I'll show you. Ceiling is done. The wall repairs are done. Ready for mud. So the inspector's going to be here tomorrow morning. And, uh, yeah. Man, if everything goes right, I'll be slapping mud around this place. Because <laughs> I bang into things. Got this one done. It's awesome. And I will make those patches disappear. That is what I really like doing. Well, there's several things I really enjoy doing about the construction trades. I do like working with mud. 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 It's like body work. It's kind of the same, only it's different. I packed a bunch more screws into the studs there because they were popping. 
tighten things up, then you're less likely to have issues with cracks in your patches later on down the road. This box on the right hand side, the silver metal one, has two inch aluminum flexible conduit. Stuff's not cheap, man, but that's the way to do it. It's basically going to be a cable chase. It goes back around behind the wall, drops down to that lower box here. And in that lower box there, there's a double gang box. Both of these are double gang boxes. I just put a single gang mud ring around it. Uh, this bottom one right now has the Cat5 wiring and the RG6 that I ran. It also has two, count them, two nylon pulls, pull strings that I ran through there. So uh, when the cable or dish or whatever the, whatever the cable box gets put here, they can run the cables up to the TV and that's electricity. That's going to be the data stuff. Uh, then you won't see anything. It's pretty cool. All right, it's 7 o'clock or something or something stupid like that. Uh, oh, 6.54, I stand corrected. I got to go. This, like I said, this inspector is on the books for tomorrow morning, so I had to be sure I got all my holes covered. Um, yeah, and then once he leaves tomorrow, the next time I see him will be for a final, so that's, uh, that's pretty good. It's on my schedule. All right, with that, that's all I have left, that. And these little bits here. That was pretty good estimating. All right, ladies and gents, I appreciate you sticking with the series here. I'll get you back here uh, by the end of this week. And I should actually be starting to hang some cabinets. Um, yeah, it'd be awesome. All right, got to go, got to run. See you.